Welcome everyone. This is John Sheely at imadaytrader.com and I'm going to be talking about the importance of technical research and our website imadaytrader.com. But of course, before we begin, we must look at our disclosures. As you know, trading does result into a high level of risk and trading is not suitable for all traders. Also, past returns are not necessarily indicative for future results. In this disclaimer, we're talking about the hypothetical disclaimer. This is because we're about to discuss the hypothetical results if you have taken certain trades at a very popular technical indicator, the relative strength indicator. You're about to see the results of over 10 years of potential trades. However, they weren't actually executed. It's all about research, the results of our indicators, and how we can use that information for our members. Let's take a look. We're going to discuss the relative strength indicator, RSI. And I'm going to show the 14 period RSI, which is basically default in many different platforms. And we're going to be talking about whether or not the prices are, quote, oversold at a level of 30, or if it's overbought at a value of 70. Let's take a look at what happens if we took every single trade based upon these values. Let's take a look at the chart. I'm showing two different indicators, of course, the RSI, and I'm going to be talking about the ATR, the average true range, and how we use that for research. So all we're taking a look is here we have the prices begin to fall, and the RSI was a value of less than 30. Now what that means by many different members and many different traders is that if the market is under 30, then the market is, quote, oversold. Well, if that's the case, I should be buying in regards to the crude oil in this particular contract, look for a profit objective, and also use a stop loss. And if prices truly are going to bounce up, then I should have a profitable result. And this is an example right here. The market went under, it rised, and I was able to make a profit. Now you may wonder, well, how high am I looking to take that particular trade? Well, here's what we're going to use. Instead of a different particular price level, because I'm going to be looking at results for over 10 years, we're going to instead use the RSI as our trigger and our profit objectives and our stop losses are going to be based upon the ATR. So in other words, if I bought because the market is oversold, then I'm going to take profits to average to range from the entry. But I need to use a stop loss, and so I'm going to use a stop loss that is to ATR underneath the entry. So what you're seeing here is that we had a profit right here. Yes, but the problem is right there, the market was oversold, and as it turns out, the prices fell back more than two average to range from my entry, so I actually had a loss. Here, prices came back. We have an oversold indication by the RSI, and we had a profit. Prices fell, and it began to rose again. So there's a profit. So here we're looking at four trades, three of them, one, and one of them had a loss. Now that's the case for the last several months. But wait a second. Let's go take at the results for the last 10 years. Again, we're going to take every single trade in the last 10 years on the daily chart. And what you're seeing is a very different result. Here on the short side, you actually made money. In fact, you had 65% of the winners. But take a look what happened on the long trade. You had a huge loss. So as a result of all the trades, you had a big loss. Let's take a look at why that happened. Let's take a look at the prices here during this particular part of 2015 and early part of 16. And as you can tell, the market was severely oversold. Well, as you can imagine, if I kept trying to buy in an oversold market, I just had losses after losses after losses after losses. So that's exactly why you saw if I was trying to buy contracts because it was oversold then I was begin to over and over again had a loss. Every once in a while, we had some rallies and then some trades that were winning. But take a look at a little more history as well. Take a look at this price action during the 2014. 
every time I was trying to kept trying to buy because it was quote oversold, I just had loss after loss after loss. Then you're taking a look at the market being again oversold in 2009, 2008, and of course losses again and again. Now once their trend begins to really have a nice rise. Well, now what's going to happen is that you're beginning to try to sell because it was, quote, overbought. But if you're in a strong trend, you keep having losses again. So, so let's just think about what we just saw. The books and many courses discuss taking a trade based upon a market is overbought or oversold because of the RSI, either a value of 70 or 30. And as you can tell, it totally depends on whether or not the market is in a severely strong bearish trend or severely strong bearish trend. So in other words, it doesn't really make any difference. The whole idea is it doesn't make any money. If you're trying to take trades based upon an overbought or an oversold indication by the RSI, that is not how you're going to make money. Let's take a look at, at a few results. Here are the last 10 years on gold. How's that doing? It's now almost the opposite. Now the short trades are beginning to lose money and the long trades are beginning to make money. Well, again, it's because what is the trend doing? If the trend is actually beginning to try to rise constantly after again, over and over, you're going to have nothing but losses trying to bet that the market is, quote, overbought. Because every time you go short, if it's in a strong market, you're going to keep having losses. Here we're taking a look at the euro. You're taking a long trades. Now again, that means trying to buy an overbought market. And it's just loss after loss. In fact, look at here, 33% of winning trades. Most of the trades, of course, are losing. And you have a very few trades in regards to a percentage of winners. Lastly, let's take a look at the spider. That's the SP500 and the ETF. And I'm taking a look at the last 10 years. As you can probably know, that the market has been very strong over the last 10 years. There has been some bearish trends from time to time. And as you can probably tell, every time you're trying to go oversold or overbought and you're trying to sell in an overbought market in the SP500, you know what you're going to see. The long trades, you are beginning to still have losses. Trying to sell in the strong SP500 nothing but shorts and basically you can tell you are again having losses over and over again because the market is in a strong bullish trend in the last 10 years so the whole idea is you're taking a look can you make money trying to buy or sell in an overbought or oversold market using the rsi which you hear about in books videos courses etc this is what we do we don't just take the results of what we see in a book or whether or not we hear it in a course. We put it in our trade station strategy. We back test to see whether or not prices really do rise or really do fall in an overbought or oversold market. Well, as you can tell with research, it says absolutely not. You do not try to buy an oversold market. You do not try to sell in an overbought market. Whether or not it is in commodities, forex, or even stocks, the RSI at a value of 30 and 70 is not reliable in regards to indicate whether or not you should sell or buy based upon the price action that we see in the charts. Oh, but wait, wait, I just now realized you may wonder, yes, but you were showing a profit objective of two average two range in regards to the profit objective and the stop loss. What if I only had one average two range as my profit objective? Uh, let's just take a look. Now, if I've bought every time the market is oversold and I've tried to sell every time it is overbought. Now, remember, every time the market is oversold, I will take a long trade. If it is overbought, I will then go sell because the books tell me it's supposed to fall when the market is overbought or oversold. Look at the results. In fact, all it means is that you're going to lose money no matter what you do. 
trying to buy or sell an oversold or overbought market when your profit objective is one average shoot range and a profit target of one average shoot range. It's just nothing but losses. Oh, and by the way, the results doesn't include slippage or commissions. I'm just showing you the raw results using the TradeStation script. So again, do you buy or sell just because the RSI is overbought or oversold? The answer is absolutely not. This is John Sheely at DayTraders.com. I hope you've enjoyed this short video. And remember to download our free offers. What is the truth about day trading? The day trading ebook and our training manual, Getting Started as a Day Trader or Swing Trader. You may also visit the links in the description of this video or by clicking the book icon that pops up on your screen right now.